I've redesigned Minecraft to create the ultimate survival world. I've spent over a year transforming every major aspect of Minecraft on this custom 16 million block island, reimagining all of your favorite Minecraft features and adding fresh new ones to build the most immersive world possible and create the ultimate survival experience for you guys. It's been the biggest challenge I've ever faced. So I am super excited to finally announce that the ultimate survival world download will release exclusively on my Patreon on November 24th. 2022 and right now you can enter to win a free copy of the world all you've got to do is hit subscribe and follow my instagram and twitter five lucky winners will be announced on my socials on november 1st so make sure you enter quick on launch day i'll be posting a massive finale video compiling the entire project along with tons of new additions and special features which will be a must watch before you play but before all of that we've still got the enormous task of transforming minecraft's nether and end dimensions in this final building episode. It's a really bittersweet moment to be saying this, but let's get started with the final transformations of the ultimate survival world. So first up, we're heading to the nether, creating a giant hellish cavern full of floating islands containing upgrades from all of the different nether biomes and tons of epic features and decorations. I'll also be transforming Minecraft's bastion into an epic piglin fort, as well as completely redesigning the nether fortress into something far more menacing and spooky. After that, we'll be heading to a top secret location to work on the stronghold, making some epic improvements to the vanilla structure before tackling the end. There, I'll be transforming the main island and obsidian spikes to create the ultimate battleground for your final adventure in the USW. I'll also be upgrading the end ships and of course giving the end city a massive transformation. The new end city will be mystical and futuristic, and it might just be built around the biggest statue in the entire USW, honoring Minecraft's mighty ender dragon. <laughs> it seems like I've got a lot on my plate for this transformation. So, let's get building. Before we continue with today's spooky transformation, it's time to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, the first game to bring the console gameplay experience to your phone and a fan of the Trixie Blocks channel. What's not to like? Today I'm going to be ranking Raid's top three champions. My third favourite is Ragash. He's a literal tiger with claw swords. I don't think any further explanation is needed. In second is Jin Toro. The costume details are insanely cool and his stats are pretty OP, especially against bosses. And my number one has to be Lydia the Death Siren. Her aesthetic is awesome, but she's also an insanely powerful support champion. It's a fun challenge to unlock her in game. And and she can really turn the tide in arena battles with her block revive ability. And since it's spooky season, Raid's running a trick or treat promotion with real life and in game prizes, including $1,000 of Amazon gift cards, plus epic and legendary Halloween champions. It's all free, you just need your Raid player ID. Download Raid through the link in my description and head to trickortreat.polarium.com, link down below. Enter your details, spin the wheel, and get your prize. But you better be quick, as this special event only runs until November 5th. Start your Raid adventure today and click the link in the description or scan the QR code that's on screen. You'll nab yourself special bonuses worth $30. You'll get a free epic champion Aina, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. And all this treasure will be waiting for you here. So, let's start building. First and foremost, Steph and I headed to the center of the island to revisit the ruined portal that I created all the way back at the start of this project. We restored the portal and lit it up. To be honest, it's kind of crazy to think that this is how it looked once upon a time in USW lore. We hopped through the portal to take a look at what naturally generating terrain was waiting for us on the other side. We came across some really awesome vanilla terrain and crimson forests throughout the caves and knew that the giant custom cavern that we'd planned would fit in here perfectly. Before clearing out the cave, I converted the nether portal to a more fitting colour and added new vines, since this was the underworld version after all. I decided it made the most sense to transform the USW's nether in a specific radius around where the island's ruins nether portal leads. So I got to work on the terraforming, which involved clearing out an enormous area and I even extended the height of the nether just for this section. The top bedrock layer looks pretty ridiculous from the outside, but luckily none of you guys will ever get to see that. Now obviously a giant cube cave wouldn't be all that immersive, so I did a bunch of terraforming to make things feel realistic, and this is already looking like something from Stranger Things. Anyway, since Minecraft's natural terrain generation in the nether can be pretty wacky, I thought it only made sense to have some fun with the terrain in my build. So with the basic cave ready to go, I whipped up some cool shapes for our floating islands where I'd be building some epic biome transformations. I had to head outside the cave to do this with the tool that I wanted to use before hopping back inside to place these islands around the cavern, even using some of them to make stalactites from the ceiling, which we'll decorate a little more later in the video. 
To break up the red, I painted the walls with a patchy gradient before scattering around a few more islands and making a giant lava lake surrounded by pieces of terrain breaking away from the edges. With our backdrop all set, I started on the first biome transformation, the Crimson Forest. I really wanted to keep things feeling authentic to vanilla for this upgrade, so I tried super hard to just build larger, more realistic versions of the vanilla crimson trees. I placed my new trees around the floating islands on one side of the cavern, adding some large boulders as well as some lava pools. And in classic Minecraft style, I of course had to have some lava falls spilling over the edges too. And for the warped forest, I pretty much just followed the same process on the other side of the cave, since the two biomes are so similar in vanilla. So moving on to the next biome, we're tackling the Soul Sand Valley. Now you may have noticed that I've nabbed the skull that I built in my Desert Temple transformation. That's because I wanted to repurpose it to create an epic demon skull for the Soul Sand Valley. Since this biome is the only place that you can find fossils in the nether, and Mojang themselves claimed they came from creatures of the past, I thought it'd be awesome to expand on this lore with a build like this. Plus, it fits really nicely with the USW's own backstory on the 12 demons of the nether. So, Steph and I reshaped the skull, added some horns and painted on a new colour palette to make the remains of a really creepy, demonic creature to place in the biome. I then switched out the normal fire in the eye sockets for soul fire and made some little adjustments before placing the remains in the cavern, along with some giant rib cages and bones that I created earlier in the series. I also included some basalt spikes to break up the terrain a little. Plus it was a nice way to tie in the soul valley with the basalt delta biome. And it wouldn't be a true Soul Valley upgrade without scattering some soul fire throughout the biome. So moving on to the final biome, the Basalt Delta. Since this is so annoying to traverse in vanilla, and we already have plenty of crazy terrain in this cavern, I decided to keep things simple and make these areas a little more survival friendly. I built some stacked basalt rock formations, added some lava pools and scattered some blackstone variants, since in vanilla Minecraft it's more likely to generate here than in any other biome. And before we move on to our nether structures, I wanted to add some finishing touches to the cavern, firstly by adding some caves to connect to the vanilla environment, just in case you guys fancy exploring beyond this area. These caves look so cool on the walls of the cavern, and the giant stalagmites and stalactites make it a super immersive transition between exploring my cavern and the vanilla environment. And finally, to finish up the environment, I realized I hadn't actually added any glowstone, so I had a really cool idea of how I could incorporate it into the ceiling of the cavern. I tried out a bunch of different patterns until I found something that looked as though the ceiling had cracked, revealing the glowstone above. This effect looks so awesome, especially with high bloom shaders. You may also find some extra gilded blackstone sources and some ancient debris tucked up high as well. So, that completes our environment and biome transformations. There are so many different areas to explore here, and to be honest, I think this will make a great place for hide and seek with some of your friends. So next up, we're tackling the Bastion Remnant. You may have actually spotted the red floor plans earlier in this video, and if you're watching closely, you'll have seen we're making one for each side of the cavern. So, I blocked out the main structure with coloured concrete. Usually I'd use wool, but it's a bit of a fire hazard here in the nether. And as you can see, I've based the shape on a real life Bastion Fortress structure. Because let's be honest, I don't think any of us really know exactly what this is. Anyway, with the main structure blocked out, I decided that I wanted to do something organic for the entrance. Since the Bastion is home to the Piglins and Piglin Brutes, I thought it would make sense if one of the creatures of the past, referenced by Mojang, were a race of giant Piglins, who perhaps was at war with the large demonic creatures whose remains also lie in the Soul Sand Valley. To honour their ancestors and ward off thieving adventurers, the present day piglins incorporated these remains into their entrance in an attempt to protect their precious gold from you guys. And there are lots more challenges waiting on the inside. Next, I painted the bastion with a gradient, adding some lava falls dripping down the walls and built the entrance, lining it with soul fire braziers. Next, I added more fire braziers, finishing up with a giant soul fire flame roaring up top. I also switched out some of the giant piglin skull blocks, because Steph said the horns looked like a moustache and we couldn't unsee it. My guy literally looks like Mario with a nose ring. Moving on from our moustached piglin, for the interior, I divided everything up and built a long menacing corridor for the entrance, with lava falls, hanging chains and etched patterns on the floor. 
I wanted to make sure that this structure had some challenging obstacles like the vanilla one, with some tough areas to traverse if you want to get your hands on all of the loot. So, with the help of our dev Godder, we made some parkour courses through lava pools on each level. On each floor, you'll find a different parkour course, which will get increasingly harder as you progress further up the bastion with better loot available on each level. Eventually, you'll reach the top floor, where you'll find the ultimate parkour challenge lining the wall. And if you can make it to the top, you'll find some epic loot up for grabs. So with our bastion complete, I mirrored it over to the other side and tidied up the surrounding environment to wrap up our bastion remnant upgrade. Even though this is more of a simple upgrade for me, I love how this turned out, especially with the expansion of our Minecraft lore and the parkour challenges throughout the interior. So moving on to the biggest structure in the nether, we're tackling the nether fortress. As usual, I set everything out with coloured blocks to plan the structure, and I actually base the main segment on the same shape as our bastion remnant. Obviously, vanilla Minecraft's nether fortress is mostly bridges and walkways, so I wanted to make sure I captured this in my transformation, planning lots of bridges to different towers, which will each contain trials and challenges of their own. I also connected the fortress up to a platform beneath the nether portal with a bridge, which I'll later on be damaging to fit with some of our lore. I got to work with the detailing and painting, opting for this really cool gradient from black concrete powder to red nether brick. This platform area was looking a little too bland, so I decided to repurpose my Jungle King statue from the Deep Dark transformation and use him to prop up the overhanging terrain. To change things up from the bone remains scattered around the cavern, I decided to create this spooky devil-like statue, also combining it with a lava feature. What do you think his story should be? Is he a lost soul condemned to serve the nether? Or perhaps he's related to the demons whose remains can be found in the soul sand valleys? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Moving on, I continued the detailing and painting along the main bridge, which I'll be adding some damage to later on. I worked my way over to the main fortress, detailing the small bridges and towers at the front, also tackling the interiors as well, since everything needs to be survival friendly and immersive to explore. Even though I followed the same formula for building these bridges, it actually took a long time to add all of the details, especially since I'm doing all the physical building alone. Plus, I included nether wart farms, spawner rooms, and lava fall rooms. And these are just the medium sized towers. Honestly, this place is vast and really brings some new challenges to exploring Minecraft's nether fortress. In the largest towers, you'll even find dungeons infested with mobs and villagers trapped in cages. If you search hard enough, <laughs> you'll even find where the piglin guards chill out and take their lunch breaks when they're not keeping watch of their prisoners or scouring the nether for gold. Anyhow, I finished off painting the external towers with that dark, creepy gradient and added some epic fire braziers to finish them off before turning to the main, central segment of the fortress. I quickly fixed up the plan and started adding crenellations to decorate the entrance. Heading inside, I plotted out a grand hallway from the entrance, lined with giant pillars and lava falls, before heading back outside to finish up the exterior, as I don't want to spoil the rest of the interior for you guys. For the front of the building, I thought it would look awesome to incorporate lava into the design, so I built a network of channels to allow the lava to cascade down the fortress, and of course, added some more of those fire braziers that I designed earlier to bring the whole build to life. And to go out with a bang, I built a giant nether star to sit atop the fortress. This star is said to empower the piglins who rule over this realm, and it is believed to have dropped from a huge wither who once roamed the nether along with the other giant creatures that are now mostly extinct. These creatures were known as the 12 demons of the nether, with each race empowered by a different negative trait from the overworld. For instance, the wither is known in USW lore as the demon of greed. So, tying in with all that epic backstory, I decided to build some giant cages to place around the cavern. These cages were used by the Piglin clan to capture the last surviving ancestors of the 12 demons of the nether, but they broke free and escaped, now wandering the nether and capturing the souls of Minecrafters like you guys. Their empty cages are scattered around the cavern. I wonder if you can find all 12. When the demons escaped, they also broke the bridge to the nether fortress in all of the commotion. So that'll be another challenge for you guys to tackle when you head to the nether for yourselves. And that just about wraps up our spooky nether transformation. This place is so creepy, you guys. Even though I said that this was gonna be a smaller upgrade, it's ended up pretty massive. So with the nether done, I still had tons left to build. So I headed back to the overworld 
and got to work on upgrading the island's hidden stronghold, which looks like a complicated old mess when extracted from the world. I laid out all of the different rooms, sorting them by type, jumping into each one to make some epic upgrades, starting with that all-important portal room. For these upgrades, I tried my best to keep things really survival friendly with some resemblance to vanilla. Next, I tackled the library, bringing these huge stacked bookshelves, study nooks, and even a second level to explore. I of course had to finish up with a candle chandelier before quickly building some upgrades for the remaining rooms and creating a staircase and corridor to connect all the rooms up. I then plotted out our shiny new stronghold. And to be honest guys, this place is an absolute maze. It's gonna be so easy to get lost in here and there are so many rooms to explore. As you can see, it's at least double the size of the original stronghold that you can see over there in the background. Even though I built this myself, I definitely still get lost in all of these winding corridors and staircases. And coming across dungeons like these when you're lost in what feels like the medieval equivalent of the backrooms is definitely super creepy. But you'll have to find it for yourselves, as I've hidden the upgraded stronghold somewhere in the USW. So get your ender eyes ready. And after at least 6,000 hours of hard work between Steph and I, we're on our way to the final transformation. Let's head through the end portal for our final major upgrade of the USW. Starting with the main end island, I made some improvements to the terrain to make things feel more realistic, using some of the floating islands I made for the nether earlier to help me out a bit. I then had the idea to edit the obsidian pillars to house large crystals perhaps fallen stars or larger versions of the end crystals that usually sit on top. It was a great idea in theory, but since the ender dragon has a tendency to destroy everything in its path, it didn't end up working out. I didn't want you guys to have a totally wrecked battleground to fight the ender dragon in, so instead I opted for something more organic and made something that suited the name Obsidian Spikes a little better. I think these clusters almost look like mystical shards from outer space that have kind of dispersed on impact with the island. And it's an added bonus that the ender dragon can't mess these up. Since I couldn't incorporate the crystals into the pillars themselves, I thought it'd be cool to add some crystals around the island instead, to perhaps show where Minecraft's end crystals originally came from. The original island is so bare and I didn't want to deviate too much from vanilla, but I think this addition definitely spices things up a bit. And finally, I created a mystical broken bridge, sort of inspired from the Bifrost bridge from Thor, leading into the distance. This bridge once led to a giant floating city, and it's a big clue to let you guys know where to head in order to find it once you've defeated the Ender Dragon, since the end gateways will only lead you to the distant lands. So that leads us to the biggest transformation of this dimension, the End City. Now for this city transformation, we had a ton of ideas and suggestions. Could we make it into some kind of giant tree city, since the vanilla version sort of resembles a tree? Or perhaps something more like a futuristic space station? None of these ideas really felt right to us. The end definitely feels a little futuristic, but also very mystical and strange. So we wanted to capture all of that in our most creative design yet. So after all the planning, uncertainty, and a whole lot of sketching, this is what we came up with. We ended up with a very limited timescale to actually build this in, but I think it definitely captures the different themes of the end. The central pillar acts as a hub to the city and anchors three large ring systems made of mystical end dust. These rings will be home to our new end buildings, creating a multi-layered city like the original. There will also be a huge ender dragon statue snaking around the central pillar as a tribute to the dragon for protecting the city from outsiders venturing from the overworld. With only about four to five hours of building time for the dragon and a big challenge ahead, I got started with the ender dragon sculpt. Now I know it would have been much easier to take a sculpt from the internet and import it into the world. And some people think that I've actually done this when they only see a picture of my organic builds. But honestly, a lot of the time you can tell when a model has been 3D imported and it just doesn't look right. Plus, if I'm creating something for you guys, cutting corners just wouldn't sit right with me. So I've always invested the extra time in this project to keep it authentic and do as much as possible myself. You may only see the process for a few short seconds, but it's definitely worth it. Anyhow, creating the head on a straight axis wasn't actually too tricky for me, but the real challenge came when tilting the head down and turning it on an angle. Both of these things can really mess with the shape of something you created on a straight axis, especially for things like teeth, which are hard enough to build with square blocks as it is. 
but I managed to clean things up nicely before placing the head and creating a snake-like body. Since this would be a wingless space dragon inspired by East Asian depictions, as opposed to a winged dragon. I painted the body in the colours of the original Ender Dragon, adding spikes down its back and ridges down its belly, before adding some arms and painting them to match the body. Also making some final tweaks to the head, using Crying Obsidian to add a glow around the face, as if the dragon is gearing up to breathe purple flames. I also added a glow to the mouth and some smoke coming from the nostrils, and at this point I was surprised I'd managed to build all of this in time. With the dragon mostly complete, besides a few little tweaks that you may notice appearing in the next few shots, I detailed the central pillar, adding some extra ring systems at the bottom and creating a huge spiralling parkour stairway up the middle to allow access to different levels. And finally, it was time to work on the buildings themselves. Steph and I wanted to keep this true to vanilla, but also more city-like with some mystical elements. We made these mini skyscrapers with the vanilla colour palette in mind, adding some mysterious glowing symbols to each building, inspired by the hex symbols used by Scarlet Witch in Marvel. We pretty much made up these symbols randomly, so if they accidentally look like anything from real life, it's completely unintentional. We also thought it'd be cool if the buildings were mirrored either side of the ring systems, defying gravity just like the vanilla end city does. So we did this for all of the buildings, creating the interiors as we went. We also made sure to create enough variants of the designs to keep things busy and dynamic, rather than just placing the same building over and over again. We made some small tweaks to the dragon, and then it was time to place all of our wacky buildings on the ring systems. We are so proud of this piece and how quickly we managed to put it together, and it definitely has to be our most unique creation to date. It will certainly be awesome to experience in-game. I can guarantee you won't have explored anything quite like this before. And with our end city complete, I moved on to the end ships, which in vanilla, they kind of look like a basic galleon with a wacky colour palette. So with that in mind, I thought it'd be really cool to modify the galleon that we used in the overworld. Perhaps some of the fleet from the overworld took a wrong turn on the seas and fell into another dimension. Whatever your predictions on the lore, we thought a subtle nod to the overworld and everything we've been creating on the island for so long now would be a nice touch to wrap up the main transformations. I modified the colour palette to match the blocks found in the end, made some design tweaks, and created some new sails that were more spacey based on some sci-fi ships I saw online. I built these ones out of stained glass, and I love the ghost-like effect. And to add that extra oomph, I thought it'd be really cool to fit a large thruster at the back to fit with the sci-fi theme, and differentiate this from the ships in the overworld. This is a space galleon now, after all. To finish off, I added ropes to connect up the sails. I used glass panes for this section, and it definitely adds to the ghosty vibes. It's looking a little like a purple flying Dutchman. So with our end ship done, I placed them around the city, and you'll also find them scattered in the distant lands. They're all pretty close to the edge, nearer to the main island and the city, and they're definitely worth finding because each ship contains special loot, including Elytra. And if you find enough of these ships, you'll eventually nab yourself a full set of netherite armour. And that wraps up our final major transformations in the ultimate survival world. So, let's take a look at everything that we've built in the nether and end.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are as excited as I am for the Ultimate Survivor World to finally be released. Be sure to let me know your favourite moments from the series in the comments below. Remember to enter the giveaway by subscribing here and following me on Instagram and Twitter, where the five lucky winners for the free Ultimate Survivor World download will be announced on November 1st. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the next time I see you, it'll be launch day. Before I head off though, I'd like to say a huge thank you to these awesome Netherite Patreons for their support. Be sure to check out the Trixie Blocks Patreon if you want your build to feature in future videos. And with that, guys, I'll see you on launch day. Set your alarms for November 24th, when the huge final video and world download will go live. See you later. <laughs>